the Burrell Fire may be 95% contained, but the increased risk of flooding and debris flow in burn-scarred areas is going to last for years. In Havila, I'm Corey O'Leary, your neighborhood reporter. The real indicator is when you're walking and your boots melt into the ash and you just don't even feel anything firm underneath your feet, that's because it is all ash and it burned so hot that it took every piece of vegetation that was there and crumbled it into ash. Abby Bolt is showing me around her ranch in Havila, explaining that not all burn scars are the same. Soil in some areas is burned more severely. In a place like this, you can see the intensity of it. A burned area response team or bear team helps identify these areas of high burn severity. So the U.S. Forest Service Burn Area Emergency Response or bear team is a group of watershed specialists that come in and try to evaluate how these watersheds are going to behave after the fire, what sort of flooding or debris flow uh, hazards exist. Andrew Keith Stone helped lead the Bear team for the Burrell Fire, which for the past couple of weeks has been assessing the burned area and creating reports, identifying risks, and providing recommendations to mitigate those risks. Key piece of that modeling is this map you see behind me, which is a soil burn severity map. A couple of canyons through this area here. And this is all draining that direction. So this is all, the red's all high soil burn severity. In areas with high burn severity, the risk for flooding and debris flow is higher. Never feels good when you're in the red on a map. <laughs> Bolts Ranch is surrounded by federal land that was intensely burned. About 14 years ago, we had a fire here called the Canyon Fire. She said in this case, no flooding mitigation measures were taken by the federal agencies that owned the land around hers. A year later, there was a day of thunderstorms in June. Like a freight train coming down the hill, large boulders and debris all crashed into our front yard at once. It was a post-fire from the Canyon Fire that came down from one of those drainages. She also remembers the Paiute Fire. This video shows the intense flooding and debris flows that resulted in the Kern River Valley due to burn scar land. She says this is a risk the Burrell Fire presents to the entire valley. Not only in the fire area where people have already lost their homes, but it's also going to hit Lake Isabella. The Baird team provides recommendations, but it's up to government agencies, such as the Bureau of Land Management, the Forest Service, and Kern County to enact those mitigation measures. I would like to see them start coming in from the top because it's all accessible, start coming in and uh, different constructional diversion techniques, whether it's wattles, putting in K-bar in some places, and even getting seeding started. Increased risk of flooding and debris flow last years after the fire is gone. Bolt says there is only so much property owners can do and that ultimately they need help from these government agencies. The hard part is, is that politically and socially it's forgotten about because it's quieter, folks have to move on to the next disaster, right? So it's important that we keep the focus on this burn area. For more information about the Bear team's assessment of this area, you can head to the website shown on your screen. In Havila, I'm Corey O'Leary, your neighborhood reporter.